I want to preach about tonight, what I want to talk to you about tonight. You ready for it? I don't know, you might have heard it. I think I talked about this down there with Brother Tilton. You might have heard it, but it's good. You ready? Everyone means you are the one. Everyone means you're the one. Say that. Everyone means I'm the one. Say I'm the one. Everyone means I'm the one. Again. Everyone means I'm the one. Again. Everyone means I'm the one. Acts 2.21. Whosoever shall call upon... Hey, did you see that word? Whosoever, I said shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be what? Amen. What does that mean? Does that just mean your sins are forgiven you? Saved. A great study in the Bible. Go through the Bible. Get a Strong's Concordance. Look up, uh, find the Greek number. You can use it, it's easy to do. And find that word, uh, I think it's sozo, it sounds like in English. I don't know how they must have said it, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, trace that word and see how many times that word in the Greek was interpreted different ways in English. A woman, her blood quit flowing. It had flowed for 12 years, wasn't it? And, uh, and uh, it stopped. She got saved. Did you know that? A crazy man. The demons were cast out of him. And the translators give us the idea about him healing, but in the original, he got saved. That's what I believe in. Blind Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus. And we say he, got, he, got, he received his saint, but the original, he got saved. And uh, there's, I've got a whole paragraph in healing the sick of just references of the words in, uh, in, in, the, in the different cases of people who got blessings from God, crazy people, blind people, sick people, crippled people, and in the original, what they got was always the same thing. They got saved. Now I quote it again. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. No wonder if he's committed sins, they'll be forgiven him. So what? Isn't that wonderful? And no wonder if he's sick, they'll be healed. The sicker you are when you come to Christ, the better, the more you get for nothing. <laughs> it's not for nothing. It's at a great price. Brother Bosworth used to smile and tell the people if you got cancer and headaches and TB and diabetes and sinner and a terrible life, all the better. You get a whole lot free. Amen. Because you get saved. Do you believe that? Amen. Who's it for? Whosoever. Who's the who in that word? Say, me is the who. Me. I am the who's who, the who's who. In, whosoever. in whosoever and everyone means, everyone means I'm, the I'm the one so I am the one in everyone and I am the who's who in whosoever I just thought of that that's nice that goes with it don't it <laughs> amen amen you know <clears throat> You ever read Romans chapter 10, verse 4? Christ is the end of the law to who? Everyone that believeth. And everyone means I am the one. So I'm in on it. Matthew 9, 35 says some nice things. Jesus went about all, uh, went about all the cities and the villages preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. 
Is Jesus here tonight? It is the will of him to heal every sickness and every disease among the people tonight. Say amen. amen. The, what God wills for one, God wills for everyone. What God does for one, God wills to do for everyone. Theology don't believe that, but it's true. God wants you to know that you're the one he had in mind when Christ returned for humankind. It's everyone he came to find. So you're the one God has in mind. Do you believe that? Today, individuals are lost in the mass, a speck in the universe, a number in the computer, lonely, afraid, hurting, and forgotten. God wants you to know that you are vital. You are loved. You are tonight special. God wants you to know he knows the number of the hairs on your head, your stature, your weight, and your thoughts. And when he died, when Jesus died, he had you in mind. Never forget it. Everyone means you are the one. I have good news. God loves you. I wish you could see the faces of people in some places I've been when I tell them that. Those are the sweetest words under heaven to bear to people. If some people in America turn me off for saying words like that, I say them anyway. To me, they are priceless words. I have good news. God loves you. God is reaching out to you. God sees you. Jesus died for you. His blood is on the altar in heaven on your behalf. Personally, you are on his records. You are on God's mind. You are vital to God's plan. Do you believe that? What God has done for anyone, He wills to do for everyone. The work is done. The Son has come. And everyone means you are the one. Amen? I never preach overseas to a multitude. I preach to one one, as the Nigerians say, to individuals, to human persons. Imagine the Crusades. Imagine preaching to the people. Imagine the villagers. Imagine them trekking through the woods and across the, 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 the land to come from their village. The brightest light many of them have is a coal oil lantern. The brightest might be one you could pump up and make it a little sharper, a little brighter. And they come and they see the big electric lights turned on. What a lift it must be to them. And they hear the words coming out of these big horns. 
and their good words. What a wonderful thing to emphasize to them that God is interested in every individual and gave every one of them special fingerprints, a special voice that no, the biggest computer in the world cannot match your voice with anybody else in the world. Yours is special. Did you know that? Hallelujah. And they come and they hear and they believe. I'm thinking of a meeting where we were in a stadium that had a, a, a big wall around it. And all of the stadium was full. All the standing room inside the wall was full. And it wasn't enough. But the police shut the, the big gates. We out far from the stadium was a place where they were parking some of the few cars that come. They don't, they don't bring many cars. Most people walk. You got a lot of bicycles. You may have an acre, uh, half an acre of them, you know. Uh, but uh, the people walk. But a, the little woman, a little woman was dying of cancer of her womb, eaten up. And she, 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 if they moved her, they said she would die. But her husband and her believed and they had heard the reports and some of them had told her, told them what we was talking about and they put her in the back of this old jalopy and hauled her there but they got there too late and the gates were locked and they had to stay away over there in that car. But thank God for the speaker horns that drive the message across distances You'd never believe, you'd, ne you'd be amazed to know how many people are healed in their homes all around our campaign grounds because we turn them things up just as loud as we can. They don't make them turn us, they don't make us turn them down, they like it. And the people can hear it all over the town. And sitting out there, uh, laying out there in the back of that old jalopy, that little woman dying of cancer swollen, her insides eaten up to the point that they said she'd die any time. If they moved her, she'd bleed to death. Out there, Jesus visited her because when he comes in the crowd, he comes to heal every sickness, every disease among the people. Yet they brought in him many that were sick and that were... and and with devils. He cast out the spirits with his word and healed how many of them? Aren't those beautiful words? Healed all that were sick. Is he the same? He's interested. Did you know it is his will that every person in this meeting tonight be well tonight? It burdens me when I see God's people with sickness. We oughtn't to identify with sickness. We shouldn't do it. We don't belong in that crowd. And I pray that you, after today, will not see yourself among the sick anymore, but see yourself among the healed. When the preacher says, I want to pray for everybody that's got this or that, don't put your hand up. Don't say, I got it. I got it. And then the next preacher comes along and he likes to pray for something else. And he says, everyone that's got that, I got it. You ever see people, they want to be sure and have whatever the preacher is interested in. They see themselves among the ranks of the sick. They identify with the infirm. They vote with the infirm crowd. Count me in. I'm one of them. I'm, oh yes, I'm one. I'm one. Don't do it. Don't do it. See yourself among the redeemed. See yourself among the well. See yourself 
identified with Jesus. That's a put down in America. You'll fuss about it. If I'd say that in Africa, they would cheer. They would love me for saying that. And they would love that. And they would believe that. But here, you love. You know, a lot of people love that attention. And so I don't want to rush that. I don't want to push that too far. Because if you enjoy that, God wants you to be happy. And as long as you want to have that, he'll help you be happy. And you, I, I wouldn't want to spoil your fun. I'm for you. I'm just out here to bless you. And people who don't believe God wants to heal the sick, I agree with them. I just want everybody happy. I don't want to fuss nobody. If they're happy with it, I want them to enjoy it. If they believe God's teaching them something, I want them to learn the lesson. If they believe it's a love token disguise, I pray for God to give them some more love. You know, just whatever they want. I don't believe in fussing nobody. I love people. But for my part, everyone, everyone means I'm the one. And I want to identify with the healed crowd. Hallelujah. That's the crowd I want to run with. And you know what? I, I know because I'm sensitive and the Holy Spirit's on me. There are some people tonight that I offended and I'm sorry and I apologize. But, because, but I, I did it because... God has already witnessed my heart that there were some people healed when I said that because they made up their mind. I am through. You won't see me among that crowd anymore. And you won't. You won't. You got it. It's yours. God wants you to have it. And that when it triggers in you, you're fixed. Hallelujah. You believe that? Yeah. <clears throat> that little woman listened and wept. Can you imagine the music, the sweetness, the consolation, the comfort that would be in a little woman like that? To hear the loudspeakers, the big voice saying, God loves you. You are precious. He's just looking at you. He don't want you to hurt. Jesus died for you. You are paid for. He has redeemed you. Can you imagine the emotion that would swell up in someone like that? You know what happened, don't you? You know Jesus visited her, passed by that car, lifted her up, healed her of cancer. It was a night or two before, I don't remember how long it was, before she was able to get in and testify that Jesus had healed her. But we were back there a year later. That little woman walked up on our platform with a new baby in her arms. That's a miracle. Hallelujah. And you can, if, if you know, it don't take much arithmetic to figure out what happened. Something happened pretty fast. Because you got to cut nine months off of that to make that baby. That's what they do out there. They, they, they make babies. That, 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 that's, what they, that's the way they say it. I'm making a baby. Isn't that beautiful? That's exactly, what, that's exactly what's happening. You and God's working on another one. Ain't that beautiful? <laughs> Isn't that beautiful for you and God to make another human being? Oh, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She was well. She had her baby a year later. Now, something happened pretty fast, you know. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Little old woman came in. Uh, I remember uh, she, she walked. She came from the village. She walked with her hands. Her feet, her legs were twisted to the side. Uh, Fourteen years before, she had given birth to her last child. And after it was over, something happened. I don't know what, but she was left paralyzed in, from her waist down. And, and her legs kind of drew to one side. And so she walked with her hands 
and dragged her body. She dragged herself all the way in from the country to that meeting. Nobody knew she was there. Who cared about her? She was just a poor woman. Who cared about a dragging woman like that? I mean, uh, there's plenty of people like that. No one's interested in her. She couldn't stand up. That was her problem. And all the field of people there standing and listening, and nobody even knew she was there. She was sitting down here. You think it's hot in a crowd that, like that? Get down among them. Sit in the dirt. It, it's like a bake oven down there, you know, in the tropics. There she sat on the ground. Nobody even knew she was there except the people that were stumbling over her, but God knew she was there. For everyone means you're the one. He don't leave anybody out. He knows the corner you're in. He knows the shadow you're sitting, sitting in tonight. He knows about you. He keeps tab on you, and he's concerned about you. And I don't know any better message to give people than to assure them that Jesus Christ is interested in you. And there she sat. She heard the report. She heard the message. She couldn't see me. The people standing all around her. The prayer was prayed. She cried out with all of her heart. Nothing happened. She heard me tell the people, if you couldn't walk, get up and walk. She tried and she couldn't. All she could do was sit there and keep listening, but she could believe. And she did believe, for she took my word serious. That's the secret, to believe. It's very simple. She never gave up. She, afterwards, she told us the story. She said, I would say, Lord, you're healing all those other people. I know you're healing me too. Thank you. Now, she, she hadn't had much instruction, but she got the bottom line. She was convinced Jesus was healing her too. And she would lay her hands there and she'd say, thank you, Lord. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? It was 20 minutes. Several times during those 20 minutes, because other people were healed and the testimonies were starting and the miracles were being reported, it was 20 minutes that woman was sitting, uh, seated there on the ground in the dust not changing in her attitude like our sister Bella believing there's force in that woman you can see that can't you she'd be a menace to the devil he'd be scared when she come down one street he'd move over on the next street you know just, just I mean I, if I was the devil I'd clear the way for that woman and I'll bet you a nickel he does and this woman wouldn't give up. She'd keep saying, thank you, Lord. You're here. Everybody that got healed, instead of her, Melly grumbling and say, oh, God, what'd you miss me for? Every testimony she heard was making her happier. Lord, you're doing it to me, too. Thank you. And pretty soon, as she did that, one of her kneecaps, she felt it budge and move. She felt that strange. I, I never felt that before. And she tried to move her leg, and it straightened out. She felt the other, it moved, and it straightened out. And she jumped up on her feet, and she went crazy with joy. We heard a commotion, I'll tell you. We heard a commotion out there, and I said, what's happened? And someone yelled, said a woman's been healed. I said, open the way, let her come. And they tried, and that woman come through that crowd yelling and, and flaying her arms and hollering and up the platform. And excuse me for saying this, when she come up the platform, we couldn't, we couldn't keep her dress down. She'd yank her dress up, and I, we'd pull it down. She'd yank it up, and she'd pull, we'd yank it up. She'd, what for? She wanted them to see her legs. Look, she'd say, look, and we'd pull it down. She'd say, look, and, pull it. and the sides of her legs were like leather, like the bottom of a barefoot boy in the summertime, like leather where she had dragged herself through the, over the roads for 14 years. And I'll tell you, she'd jerk her dress up, and then she'd jump, and she'd shout as high as she could, and she would dance, and she would run, and she would jump. Isn't it beautiful? Everyone means you're the one. That's what God wants us to know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me. I will answer thee. That's thee. Thee is you. 
Say, thee is me. me. God said, I will answer thee. You believe that? I tell people that. They do it. It works. You don't need any explanation. Just do it. It works. Hallelujah. Jesus. Matthew 7, 7. Six times Jesus emphasized this one simple point. When he stands up and says the same thing, six times I stand up and take notice. I say he's trying to get a point across some way. He must be meaning this. And you know what I'm going to read to you, don't you? He said, number one, ask and ye shall receive. Say, ye is me. And if me asks, me will receive. Because ye is me. Hallelujah. Ask and ye shall receive. It shall be given you, Acts is the way it says. Number two, seek. Ye shall find. You can bet on it. Number three, knock. It shall be opened to you. Number four, everyone that asketh receiveth. I tell you that's almost too much to be true. Everyone, say that. Everyone. That asketh receive it. Now these preachers that tell me God will answer some prayers and some he won't, they're wrong. These preachers that tell us God will heal some and he won't heal others, they're wrong. Jesus said, now I'd rather believe him than a preacher. Everyone that asketh receiveth. Isn't that a beautiful promise? Never forget that promise. Number five, and he or she that seeketh findeth every one of them and that's not all number six and to him or her that knocketh it shall be opened six times he said the same thing isn't that beautiful God wants everyone to know how to pray and receive an answer and everyone means you're the one praise the Lord if you believe it say amen, amen. every miracle is an example for everyone and everyone means you're the one I told many of you were how many were at the camp meeting last night I gave the witness at the camp meeting about going to Jamaica the almost 10,000 that were converted almost a hundred blind people healed 125 deaf mutes that were healed praying one one come back to America they called us to, to, to lead the meeting, a big meeting where an evangelist had gotten tired and had to quit. Thousands of people there. And how that God spoke to me while I was preaching, if I can answer one prayer, uh, for a prayer for one person, why not include two at a time? Make your prayer take in two. Big business. And I said, okay, I believe you could do two at a whack. He said, what about three? Yeah. Five? At a time? Why not? How big is a miracle? God said to me while I was reading. How big is a miracle? How do you measure a miracle? If a miracle is what you can't do, then you can't measure it. It's unlimited. A miracle is for everybody. God said 10, 10 at a time. All you did is ask for it anyhow. You must have made contact. Your prayer must have got through. My power must have got back. And I did it when you prayed because I promised if you'd pray, I'd answer. Why don't you, while you're at it, say, send it on 10. I said, okay, 10 of the whack from here on. Boy, that'll cut down the time we stand in line. 10 at a time wonderful 
F.F. F. Bosworth said 25 years, uh, several, many years ago when I talked to him when I was 25 and he was 75, he said if Moses had prayed for the sick one at a bunch, I mean one at a time, he said uh, most of them would have dropped dead before their turn came. <laughs> that's the truth. That's a good thought, isn't it? That's not to put down anyone praise one at a time. That's wonderful, beautiful. But isn't God big? How big is a miracle? You know, you got, I've been out there, that, 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 them big bunches, if I had to line them up, a lot of them would have died before I'd have got to them. But Jesus can get to 10 at a time. So I pray one prayer and get 10 healed. <coughs> Wonderful. But God kept talking to me. Said, would it work for 50? Yeah. How about just, how about everybody? How about everybody? And when he did that, I began to hear all them scriptures where everybody got it. Oh, and then I knew I was on the Bible route. I knew then. Jesus went about teaching all the cities and villages and healing every sickness, every disease among the people. I've forgotten the figure. Uh, Brother Finnis Dake tells us. Do you recall how many times he says that everybody got what Jesus was offering? I forget, I don't know, it, it's unbelievable how many times in the New Testament that everybody got it. And say, everyone means I'm the one. Means I'm the one. Do you believe that? Yeah. And so then we went to Puerto Rico, as I said last night, and the, the masses of people there, and, and we prayed for everybody, and the miracle started happening. Why? Because everyone that asketh receiveth. And I taught the people, everyone to pray. If Jesus died to give us a blessing, God's will is that we have that blessing, and God's will is that we have that blessing now. What does the Bible say about salvation? Behold, now is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. The idea, if Jesus died to provide a blessing for us, it's God's will for everybody to have that blessing for whom he died. Now, if he didn't die for you, you're not in. If you want to exclude yourself, you have the right to do that, but he doesn't exclude you. He includes you. Amen? So if he died to provide the blessing, then it's God's will for you to have the blessing. So if it's God's will for you to have the blessing, when does God will for you to have the blessing? Now. Okay, then it would be wrong for anybody to wait to get what Jesus died so that you can have now. Because he said now is the time. Well, the only way that that'll work for everybody is for everybody to believe at the same time, everybody act at the same time, and everybody can have it at the same time. That must be God's ultimate will. That must be why we've done this 33 years, and it works, and it keeps working, getting better and wonderful, never change. And as, as I witnessed last night, we've never known an ebb and a flow. We talk about over here the waves. Haven't been no waves where I've been. Just all been the same. They talk, I read books. A lot of people write books about it. They make, they make whole, whole, whole theses on it. And I, I, I read them, and I see where they've got it dated from this date to that date, and that was so-and-so, and this date to that date was so-and-so, and, and we had it from this date to that date, and those, that year to that year, then didn't have it, it was gone, and this year it come back and go. I never did know the difference. I never did find out it ever stopped. So they forgot about me when they wrote those books. It was still just the same. I never have seen any difference. Now that, that, that makes you scratch your head, don't it? And say, wait a minute. See? See, of course, what, what, I, 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 you know, maybe, maybe we could say it better over here. What, what it means is, what we're talking about really is people change. People get stirred up and then people fold their arms and gawk and die spiritually. People are enthused. And then uh, people get revived. And then people grow lukewarm. Well, we control the waves. You see what I mean? So when we turn off 
then God has to stand back and fold his arms and wait till we turn on again. And when we turn on again, here he comes again. And here comes another wave. And that's what happens. And that's what we're really talking about. You know, sometimes we ought, we ought to be careful how we say that because God never has run out. And everywhere you go, where people are reaching out, it never has run out. 33 years, it's never changed. One 33-year-long constant healing great move of God across the world never has changed. I'm thankful I've been there where it's never changed. You believe that? Does that help you? Does that help you to understand? Everyone means you're the one. So God wants everybody to have it. God is on your side. And God loves you tonight. Now, I want, I want to just show you a few, just a few illustrations here to help you see how God wants it to be. Example, woman with the issue of blood. She come to Jesus. And I, that's one of the most beautiful stories in the Bible because that little woman, very unworthy, unwanted, considered dirty, almost regarded like a leper. They didn't want her in the house. If she sat on a stool, they had to burn that stool. It was contaminated. Or they had to go buy uh, the sacrifice animals or fowls and go to the priest and have it ceremoniously cleansed. And that cost money. And a lot of them couldn't afford it, so they'd have to burn the chair. Nobody wanted a woman around like that. Nobody wanted her in the house. Nobody wanted to shake hands with her. They were contaminated. Did you know that? That's what it was. She got a, a brand new idea. Now, of all people, I, I say this to you to encourage you. I don't care who you are. If you get your mind on Jesus and want him to bless you, you can get an idea that will not only help yourself, but that will help a lot of other people. That little woman got a brand new idea. She got the idea to touch the border of Jesus' garment and get a miracle. Nobody else had tried that. Nobody else had done that. And it worked. And she came through the crowd and touched him. And she got her miracle. Now, none of the disciples would have helped her. They would have all driven her off if they could have. I don't ever want to be one of those kind of disciples, do you? Even blind Bartimaeus, they said, shut up, don't bother him, he's busy. Are you that kind of a preacher? When you become a preacher, young people, are you going to be one of those kind? Say, that's against the law, you can't have that. No, we ain't praying today, we're having an important ceremony. Don't bug us with a miracle with healing today. Any kind of a meeting Jesus ever conducted, he always had time for miracles and interruptions. Amen? I believe that. Hallelujah. That little woman came in the crowd. Nobody would have let her get in if they'd have known. She had to sneak in. Do people have to sneak in? I went to India and preached. Well, at first, as a, as a missionary, Daisy and I, they wouldn't let us preach. They, they stuck us in a corner with language books. We had taken some of those old picture, uh, gospel pictures out there and we'd sneak out, sneak from the missionary and go out and take some of these pictures out back of the house and witness, as soon as we learn enough words, witness to the cook and to the dobe, the washer man. Those days everybody always had servants. It's, they still do that. that. That's a way of life out there. But the missionaries had a lot of them, you know. And we'd go out there and talk. And we'd have to sneak out to do it. And we got caught. And we got reprimanded. And we were told, don't ever, ever talk to people of that caste. You bring reproach on the mission. Can you believe that? Pentecostal missionaries? Well, thank God that's a long time back. And I don't think there's any of them surviving. Thank God for that. Amen. But see, I know what I'm talking about. When I, when I see this little woman, it touches me. The, 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 the sweeper fella, lovely young fella, down in Lucknow, 
The missionary invited us, and we, and, 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 and we were able to preach for three weeks' miracle of miracles. On one condition that I wouldn't ever make an altar call. Pentecostal missionary. I had to agree I wouldn't make an altar call. Because he said, you don't do it here like you do in America. Well, I was glad to get to preach. I'd have done anything. I'd have stood on the head to preach. So I didn't make an altar call. Burning up inside. Oh, boy, did I want to get him saved. He wouldn't let me. The last night, I said to Daisy, get ready. It may bust every hamstring in this outfit, but I'm going to make an altar call. The meeting's over anyhow. He can't do nothing but put me out. And I did it. They just had a little place, probably wouldn't have seated, 30 people. And the same little 15 people came every Sunday, heard his little 30-minute talk and his little benediction. And then he went off selling insurance, making three or $400 every week, you know, and never said anything until next Sunday. Silliest thing in the world. Thank God that day's over. Pretty near over. Some of them still there, not many. <clears throat> you know where the sweeper... For him to hear the message, he wanted to hear. You know the deal we had to make? Said, if you come behind the church, we'll see that the doors kept open and, 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 and sit out there and listen, and you'll be able to hear us. And he did. And he accepted Jesus, but he couldn't come inside. He was the wrong cast. I know what I'm talking about, about this little woman. That was in 1945. This is a heap earlier than that. <laughs> Amen. They wouldn't have let her come. But she got her own idea. I say to you, think. You got a brain? You and God, go get them. You can do anything with God. Don't wait for somebody to approve it. Get your dreams and make them come to pass. You are grown. Who cares whether people like it or not? Do your thing with God. That last night we made that altar call. And 11 Hindus came running down the front. Hindus. They come in there and listen. They're great philosophers. Eleven Hindus. Never in the history of that church have they ever seen that happen. And it made the preacher so mad, the missionary, that he went home. He had lost control. Me and Daisy had everything cooked and dried. When they come up there and they hit, I knew they'd come. And they come up there. I told them to get on the knees. And I had Daisy all fixed. I said, you get down there with them. And I said, start praying out loud just as loud as you can. Of course, that just like I busted everything. They don't do that. And just as soon as I could, I saw that the pulpit was safe or that we could make more noise than him. I got down there with her. That's the best thing we could do is make noise. Well, thank God for noise. If it's holy noise. I got down there. I'll tell you, we prayed up a storm. Those 11 Hindus got saved. Not a one of the Christians in the bunch would, would touch us. The old secretary, bless her old heart, old sister Bedell, she sat back there in the corner in shock. An old Anglo-India woman, and all she could pray was, Oh, God, control this. Oh, God, control this and save our church. She told us later, she confessed. That's what she prayed. Oh, God, control this and save our church. Eleven Hindus getting saved. They wasn't caring, caring about saving Hindus. They won't save their church. What under heaven is the church good for anyhow? It is a saving apparatus. Isn't that right? It's a saving body. She prayed, Lord, control it and save our church. But we got 11 of men anyhow. <laughs> well, oh boy. This little woman, what a, my point was, she went... She touched him. She got it. Now, here's the good part. You want know the good part? Mark chapter 6, verse 55 and 56. Always hook that up. Here's, here's the beauty part. The story of the little woman is in Mark chapter 5, verse 24 to 34. She got healed. I can see her taken off over the hill heading for the marketplace. That's where all the women were. She wanted to tell the women. The man wouldn't listen to her anyhow. 
she run to the women. And the women saw her coming. Can't you just hear them? Somebody running out there saying, Jilsey, is that you, Jilsey? Yes. Looking about like that French woman. Chelsea, you look so pretty. Your face looks bright. There's color. What happened? Oh, don't you see it? You bet you it happened that way. They fell in each other's arms and they started talking like only two women can talk. Talking about the wonder of God and you women keep talking. God bless you. Hallelujah. Tell it. And she went to the market, and I can see the women gathering around in wonder, saying, you touched him? My God, woman, you shouldn't have done that. Don't you know you contaminated him? He's an important man. She said, I know it, but that's the only way I could get it. There wasn't any other way. They wouldn't give me an interview. Them disciples wouldn't let me get close to him. They didn't want to talk to me. They wouldn't let me in where he was. I had to break all the rules. Break the rules, baby. They're made to be broken. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You believe that? Amen. Be sure and tell them French women I said break the rules, interpreter back there. Tell them I said that. Oh, boy. She said I had to. They said it's what? They, sh they would have stoned you. She says, I know it. And they were about to because it shocked everybody. Because you know what he did? I don't know. I didn't expect this. She said that he said something went out of him. He said he knew when I touched him. Oh, can't you see him talking about that? That was news. That was something to talk about. Sure enough, yeah. And he, 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 he looked around said, scared me. I knew I was caught. So I figured they'd kill me. But I had, I was caught. There wasn't anything to do. He would have found me. And said, so I went and I fell down. I just fell right down before him. And I said, it was me. I told him all the truth. That's what the Bible says she did. She told him all the truth. And she said, those disciples, they looked so mean. Said they were ready. I think they were ready to call on the crowd to stone me. I had touched him. I'd contaminated him. He'd have to go to the priest and be cleansed. I knew that, but there was the only way I could do was break the rules. And said, you know what? They was about to stone me, and they, was, they were fierce looking. And he looked down at me, and he, she said, he stood up so tall, and he looked so wonderful, and he called me daughter. And when he did that, they scattered they didn't know we were related. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Oh, man. She said they backed off. He called me daughter. And he said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. She said they couldn't do a thing to me. Not a thing. I was exonerated. Oh, that's a message on redemption. That's a message on no judgment. That's a message on righteousness. Let the demons howl. They can't touch me. I just walked out. Not a demon could stop me. Nobody could stop me. I had gotten it. Do you see the message? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah! 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 Oh, hallelujah! For this exoneration! Hallelujah! For this redemption! Hallelujah! For this freedom! Hallelujah! That we're not contaminated anymore! Hallelujah! For we're free! We're free! We're forgiven. We're saved. Nobody can touch us. We start and they just open the way. We just walk through. She said they couldn't touch me. 
He called me daughter and said I was okay and said I could go in peace. And they just moved back and I just walked out like a lady. Boy, 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 how she, how, how Jesus makes a lady walk. Wow. And said when I got out of sight, I started running. I didn't let them see me run. I just walked out like a lady. And they saw her running over the hill and said, Jill Z, you look pretty. G-. And then they, they told the story. And wow. And so that news spread like crazy. Every one of those women went home and told their men. <clears throat> and those men, a big part of them was Jews. And they were so mad they could have bitten nails. They said that crazy woman did that. They said, how are we going to get John healed? Look like if we get to Jesus, he'll heal John. Look like he'll heal anybody that gets to him. I guess we're going to have to do what that crazy woman did. That must have been the hardest pill to swallow that those Jews ever swallowed. We are going to have to copy a woman. <laughs> They did it, you can bet your life on it. And they, 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 they it was tough. But, but do your thing. Break the laws. The crowd, the world will follow you and do what you do. You believe it? And so here it is. And they ran. Look, Mark chapter 5, she got it. Mark chapter 6, Look, listen to what's happened. She's the first one ever did it. No one ever thought of such a thing. Now listen to this. Verse 55. And they ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was and whithersoever, that's a big long word and it covers a lot of territory, whithersoever, he entered into villages or city or country. I'm telling you, them women scattered everywhere. They told that everywhere. Wherever they went, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might what? <laughs> oh, boy, we can laugh on that. That they might touch if it were but the border of his garment. And it worked every time. As many as touched him were made perfectly whole. It worked for the woman. It worked for everyone. Everyone means you're the one. You believe it? Hallelujah. Now that's just one example. I just got pages of them. Look at them. All in the Bible. Look at them. I got to skip them. I preached long enough. It's time to go home. So I'm going to quit this sermon. But I'm going to give you some words the Lord gave me. I got all stirred up one day. And, and so here it is. When you've begun to know God's Son... You comprehend what he has done. Our enemy is overcome by the blood of God's own son. It was shed for you, for everyone who comes to God, the battle's won. You'll marvel he helps anyone, for he tells everyone to come. What God has done for anyone, he wills to do for everyone. The work is done. The sun has come. And everyone means you're the one. His word can't fail, and that's no pun. The devil's work has been undone. God's promise is for everyone. And everyone means you're the one. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. 
Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Stand up on your feet and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you mean every one of us. Every one of us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to have a prayer for everyone. But before we have that prayer for everyone, I want to have a prayer for everyone that's not right with God. Because everyone means you're the one. And the way to get this thing started is to get it inside. Amen. And there's power. Oh, there's power in a meeting where everyone has peace with God. Where everyone is clean and pure. Where everyone has received Christ and knows they're right with God. So here's what I want to do. I want to pray for you first. Then, I want, then we're going to have this prayer for the healing. And I ask you just hang tight right where you're at. And here's what I want to do before I pray that prayer for everyone. And I believe that's